it's highly likely that at some point you have had to learn something, whether it be out of interest or because you've got a big exam coming up. Have you ever found that you just can't concentrate or you spend a lot of your time on irrelevant material or you just aren't absorbing the material? Even worse, you just can't sit down and do the work. I'm an Oxford student and I study philosophy, politics and economics and I have done GCSEs and A-levels and now I'm studying for my university exams. From these experiences, I have given a lot of thought on how I study best and how I learn most effectively. So I thought I would share with you my four top studying tips to combat these guys when you're trying to learn something. Using these tips, you should find that you're learning more content more efficiently and more effectively. I'll then be following up this video with more specific videos on how to study for exams, specific revision techniques you guys can try out, and how to study for science subjects, maths, and for the humanities. Of course, these are my personal tips that I have found extremely helpful during my academic career. If you do have any pieces of advice you find incredibly helpful when you are trying to study, please do share them down in the comments because I'd really love to hear from you. Before we get into the tips, I advise that you watch the video all the way through and then jump to the specific bits if you want to recap. Treat it kind of like a lecture, just let it wash over you and then you can go back to the specific sections because I will put an outline of the entire video in the description with timestamps. So you can just click and then jump to that section if you want to refresh your mind. You can obviously jump to those sections now because I can't stop you because I'm here and you're there. Let's begin! My first tip to improve concentration is to remove distractions. However, I've slightly changed this. First and foremost, you need to figure out what it is that distracts you. Upon figuring that out, you need to make sure that they are not there to tempt you when you are studying. So look around the room now and just figure out what around you is considered a distraction in your opinion. I personally get distracted by my phone, people watching television around me, and YouTube, but this doesn't count. Now here's a trick to doing this well. Don't go with an all-out ban, because that's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult because our lives, we are bombarded with information, things that demand our attention, and it's very hard to just switch it all off and just focus on one task. However, if you do this step by step, it becomes a lot easier and doesn't require a ridiculous amount of willpower. When you start off small, you eventually can build it up, and then you will find that those things that used to distract you no longer do because you actually discover that you don't find them as interesting anymore because you've refocused your attention on something else. You begin to reason that what you want to do is work. And that is what you're doing at that moment in time. And whether Barbara has liked the fact that some celebrity is now wearing purple trousers on the internet is no longer that important. Plus, it would always be there later. And if it isn't, that might not be the end of the world. So here's a tip you can try out. Work in bursts. Get a timer, a stopwatch, or an online stopwatch from this website. If you like, I'll add it to the description for you, as I will everything that I mention. Now set that timer to 20 minutes. When it ends, feel free to do whatever you want for the next 10 minutes. Go crazy, go eat some pizza, go check the weather, go meditate, anything. Just try not to do anything enticing because if you start watching an episode of something, you will discover that when that 10 minute timer ends, you'll not know how that episode ended. That's because you have another 20 minutes worth of work to do. Then again, if you can pause that show, it's not really an issue. Modern technology. Because you've allowed yourself 10 minutes of fun for every 20 minutes of work you do, those things that were originally distractions, well, they are no longer distractions because you know that you'll be able to get back to them at some point. You want forcing yourself to work against your will for the rest of your life, as it may have seemed before. But when you are working, remember that you are working. Try not to get carried away with your thoughts. As soon as you realise that you're remembering the events from last night's party, just acknowledge it, accept the thought, and just bring your attention slowly back to the work that you're trying to do, whether it be reading a book or trying to do some math sums. Now don't blame yourself or hold any grudge if you realise that you are not focused on the task at hand. Just accept it and move on because in time you will develop a greater amount of focus and then if you consistently do this, you will be able to concentrate for a far longer period of time. If you do find yourself remembering that you need to send an urgent email, you need to buy someone a birthday present, jot it down on a piece of paper and then in the 10 minutes luxury term that you have coming up, just perform the task. Send the email or go on to Amazon and buy the present that you wanted to get your friend. Make a note of it and that way it won't be in your mind and you won't have to hold it there and force yourself to remember it because you've jotted it down. There's something missing here though. How do you know if you're developing more focus? So when your 20 minute timer goes off, ask yourself a question. Could I do another five minutes worth of work? If the answer is yes, well first of all, do another five minutes worth of work. If that's what you want to do, then do it, great. Next, consider increasing the amount of time that you're working from 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And when you begin to think that I could have done another five minutes there, why don't you increase it to 45 minutes? I tend to find that when I'm working, I end up getting into the zone. And when the timer goes off, it's more of an annoyance than it is a relief because I really want to just finish the chapter that I'm reading or finish the notes on the section I'm on. Each time you do it, you're just pushing yourself just that little bit more, increasing your stamina and getting stuff done. 
Remember though, you do need a break from studying, so make sure that you are setting an end goal for yourself. Each time you finish the burst and you chill, all the information you just read will wash over your mind and process, and then when you go back, you'll be mentally refreshed and ready for the next round. It's much like physical exercise when you're doing numerous sets and then having rest between the sets. Instead of trying to do 120 push-ups in one go, you break them down to 8 sets, where you do 15 in each set. Between each set, you might use sit-ups to rest the muscles that you were previously using. In the end, you achieve the same amount with better technique and speed. At least that's what we found in the martial art I do. The third tip in this section, and you guys are going to like this one, is to eat something sweet. In his book, Thinking, Fast and Slow, which I highly recommend you read because it's incredibly interesting, Kamen includes a study that discovered that when conducting tasks that required cognitive reasoning or high levels of self-control, your blood glucose levels drop. It's like a runner who draws glucose from their muscles when they're performing sprints. To test this theory, an experiment was done with two groups. Both groups were asked to perform a task that required a high level of focus, and then they were asked to perform a second task. However, before performing the second task, one of the groups was given some lemonade with sugar in it, and one of the groups was given some lemonade without sugar in it, but a sweetener known as Splenda. The Splenda drinkers performed the second task worse than they did their first task. However, those who drank the lemonade with sugar in it did not see any deterioration in their performance. Again, I shall include a reference in the description for you. So, from this, the next time you are studying, have a bowl of grapes or some blueberries or some fruit juice, maybe not a big bar of chocolate because that isn't very good for your health, and feel free to have a bite or a sip. I actually try this, and when you consume that bit of fruit or that bit of chocolate, you suddenly get this kind of rejuvenation that actually feels really nice, and even if it doesn't do anything, it makes you feel good and kind of wakes you up again, so... Want to give it a try? If you do find this distracting, however, you may want to restrict it to your break periods, and that will also control the amount of fruit that you're consuming in case you are consuming just all of the grapes instead of doing work. The added bonus to this is, if it doesn't work, then you get to eat fruit, or maybe bits of chocolate, and that's not a bad thing. The concentration section has covered productivity, now we move on to time efficiency. The biggest tip here is to figure out what it is that you need to know, which is especially helpful if you're working towards a deadline. If you're studying for an exam, there will be a specification or a rubric that will detail for you what it is that you need to learn for the exam. Find out what these topics are and make sure that you know them. If you're writing an essay, look at the essay question and really pinpoint down what it is that you are trying to answer. Then when you are reading for the essay, you can ask yourself, is this book helping me answer the question. If it isn't providing you with useful background information or something that directly answers the issue that you are trying to address, move on to reading something else. A great tip here is to read the conclusion first so that way you can see if the content is relevant to what you're trying to address, and if it isn't, move on to another section. Of course, all information is good information because knowing things about stuff is cool. However, if you have a strict deadline that you are trying to meet, scrolling through a mountain of information that is interesting but ultimately unhelpful for the task at hand, isn't going to be very useful for you to get the work done. The beauty of this is you can apply this technique to any moment when you need to optimize your time, for instance. When I was applying for Google, they gave me an outline of the information that I should be aware of about the company. I took that breakdown and made sure that I researched those specific areas instead of wasting my time on things that I thought might be helpful. And that story did have a happy ending, so make sure that you remember this tip for when you're applying for jobs as well. With concentration and time efficiency covered, now let's look at how to absorb information. This is absorbing information. The great thing about this is everyone is different when it comes to learning. If you're part of the UK education system, you have no doubt heard about this technique of figuring out how best you learn. Like whether you are a kinesthetic learner, an auditory learner, or a visual learner. For instance, if you love learning things from doing things, if you love learning things from hearing things, or from seeing things. It's actually quite a crude summary of the different ways in which people learn. However, this website, again I'll add it to the description for you, gives a more insightful way of discovering how it is that you learn best. You just answer 24 questions and then it will give you a breakdown and rank according to how best you learn, whether it be visually, auditorily, interpersonally, naturalistically, etc. Also fantastically, it will also tell you different methods that you can use that adopt that particular learning style so you can start trying them out. It is an experimental process, but once you figure out what it is that works for you, you're gonna see the results. Knowing how you learn best is the foundation for absorbing material effectively because you're beginning to understand how your mind likes to store and organize information. From my experience, the most effective way of using the different styles in which you learn is to use them as complements to one another when you're learning. This way you build connections to the information you're trying to learn in the different styles that you like to learn in as much as possible. This increases the chance of that information actually sticking in your memory. For instance, you might be trying to learn a new word. We'll take soporific as an example. You write down the word, along with its definition, visual. Then you say the word, soporific, aloud, which is an auditory way of learning. And later you might try to figure out how to use that word in a sentence, 
For instance, lectures are a great soporific. That's covered the kinesthetic and logical side of things. Notice that each time I'm using a style of learning that works for me, and each time I'm forming more connections with that word that will just ingrain it in my memory. To test out this point, see if you can use the word soporific in a sentence later on today. I will add its meaning and whatnot down in the description. You can literally apply this technique to anything you are trying to learn. It goes from initially taking notes, to then talking about those notes with a friend, to then recreating those notes for memory, or perhaps making a dance out of those notes if that's how you learn. Just remember that the more learning styles that you adopt that work for you, the more likely that that piece of information is going to be etched into your memory. The next big tip for absorbing information, and again, some people are going to absolutely love this one, is to sleep. There's a lot of new information emerging about the science of sleep, especially as we begin to kind of understand more about the way our brain works. The best summary of the science behind sleep is on SciShow's YouTube channel, which I'll add down in the description because you've just got to watch it, because it's just really fascinating. When you're sleeping, your brain is trying to process through all of the information that you have bombarded it with from earlier on in the day, and that is especially true when you are dreaming. When you're dreaming, you might find that sometimes you end up dreaming about things that you experienced earlier on in that day, for instance, during your English homework or sitting in traffic. Scientists think this is because your brain is going through all the experiences you had on that day and just organizing them into important information or not so important information. And when you dream about something crazy like saving the world from an army of tyrannical raccoons, this is your brain anticipating potential events that might happen. It's like it's trying to mentally prepare you for the raccoon revolution via an evolutionary piece of simulation software. The reason this is relevant is because if you are not getting enough sleep, your brain will not have enough time to process through all of the information you have tried to learn that day. That means that some of the effort that you put into all the learning you did that day may go to waste because you're not getting your seven or eight hours. Recommendations vary. It's like defragging your hard drive. Your thoughts won't be organized, so it'll be harder to drop your memory files when you're searching through your mental archive. So tonight you can sleep easy knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you are going to be smarter. That's gonna be a win-win, right? Now I've mentioned concentration, time efficiency, and how to absorb material, but how do you actually sit down and start doing work? My biggest piece of advice for this is to begin to develop a habit. Not a bad habit, a good habit. When you wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you have your cereal and you read the newspaper, none of that feels as though it's requiring a huge amount of willpower. For me, that's because usually I do it quite regularly. I do it day in, day out. Having observed this, when I want to learn something new, I try to integrate it as part of my routine. I develop it into a habit. So my New Year's resolution this year is to try and get good at drawing. To make sure I stick to it, at the end of every evening, I have decided that I'm going to try and draw one picture. I set myself a reasonable target and I made it a thing that I do regularly. In this way, I'm not forcing myself to do it. It just happens to be the thing that I do with my life at that particular time in my life. If you can do this with learning, then it becomes less of a chore and more just the thing that you do with that part of your day. An example of this might be that you always do your homework between 4pm and 6pm every day after school, and then after that you spend the evening doing more lighthearted stuff. Of course that example is trying to illustrate a point, I'm not saying that you should abide by that strict regime. But when you consistently allocate a specific time of the day or of the week to perform a particular task, it's amazing how much easier it is to actually get it done. So there you have it, those are my four top tips on how to address concentration, time efficiency, absorbing material, and to get down and do work. As mentioned, if you want to jump to specific parts of the video to refresh your mind, I've added time sense to every part of the video down in the description, so you can just click and then it will take you to that specific section. If you do decide to give any of these techniques a go, remember to apply them wholeheartedly. If you have any tips or feedback about anything that I have said in this video, feel free to post it down in the comments below because I would love to hear from you guys. To complement this video, I'll also be uploading more specific videos on how to revise for exams effectively and how to study humanities, sciences and maths, and also how to read academic texts and write essays well. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to subscribe and I will see you later. Hey look, it's one of those annoying end screens. If you like this video, you might also like these videos on applying to Oxford University or these vlogs about life at Oxford as a student. You know, in case that's your cup of tea. If I got that wrong, I'll just stop talking, like now. What, you singing? Yeah, and you say, Dad, shut up! <laughs>